Banditos, the devs have finally made invasion infiltrations available for public matchmaking. And I just finished my daily run. I've got some thoughts to share and I'll tell you everything you need to know. Hey, if you missed it, I just dropped a review of the Hotfix 1.13 changes we got today. And yep, the invasion update was one of them. This is a really good update. You're going to want to know. So be sure to check out that video for the full breakdown and all the big changes coming on October 10th. You're not going to want to miss it. Let's get into it. So lots of changes over time have happened to the invasions, but one of the big things people were asking for was public matchmaking. If that's you, then today's your day. You can now do it. So here's where you access your invasions. They're only available on hard mode and they rotate on a daily basis. So you can do four total runs, two per invasion. Okay, so this is day one and the two invasions that we had for today's rotation was the Forgotten's in Sterile Land, the Mysteries, and in White Knight Gulch. And this is going to get you the parts you need to unlock Haley if you haven't done that, as well as some other minor rewards. But the biggest reason why you wanna do this, if you haven't figured it out yet, is the gold. By completing all your invasions on a daily basis, that's five million in gold. And roughly, you can do all of them in less than 30 minutes and they've made sure it's worth doing these here's a small excerpt that you're going to want to know this is from the dev discussion this is what's coming on october 10th that's related to this infiltration operation and you're going to want to know this and this is why it's worth participating in these they're adding a new difficulty to these infiltration operations specifically a 400 percent infiltration operation so that's talking about the experience boost you can get from these so that you can get more rewards and hopefully you level up your weapons better they're also going to be buffing these with more loot what i want you to notice is that you can choose the 400 percent option in infiltration operations with the invasion event so it sounds like these invasion events you can select that option so they're going to allow you to make these harder for those who think that they're too easy that's how i interpret this we will see on october 10th then these same invasion events or that location will still allow you to play at 400% even after the invasion has run for the day. And then from there, I assume it rotates. So these are gonna bring more difficult enemies and a greater number. This is the key part here, endless fights. I love that, allowing you to fight endless battles. But there's more to this. This includes an exclusive currency only obtainable in 400% infiltration operations, which can be used to obtain special items that can be traded at the ETO zero. So basically vouchers. And this vendor is going to be showing up every weekend. So Friday to Sunday, you can use those vouchers to buy weapon blueprints, materials, inventory expansion, which I like, paints, etc. So it looks like it's going to be a mix of cosmetics and actual material you need to craft or research weapons. So we don't quite know if the invasions themselves will provide vouchers. I am connecting the dots a little bit, but I don't want to lead you astray. So let's just hold that thought for October 10th and we'll circle back on it. But I do think they should because once everybody has Haley, is it just gold? Is that the only reason why we're doing these? And so there's a lot of questions I bet you have on these dungeons. Like, are they easier to do or are they too easy? Are they boring? Well, let me tell you what you can expect. So in the patch notes, they clearly say that they increased the quantity of monsters that you're going to encounter. From my playthrough this morning, it also looks like that they increased the HP of those monsters as well. They weren't super squishy, so they're scaled up a little bit, but it didn't feel bad. It was just noticeable. So I think that's good. The quantity of enemies felt right, and the speed of the mission also felt right. It didn't feel like they were dragging it out. The structure of it is all the same. So if you've been doing these or you have done these, then there shouldn't be any surprises. However, there is one big deal here that the devs need to fix. We're going to get to that. So let's start with Sterile Land. I match made with a random group. It happened pretty quickly and we didn't have any hiccups. Now, I don't think these objectives are so difficult that you're going to encounter a group that's going to make it really difficult to complete. I think what's mostly important is that at least one person is focused on the objective. With some of these, it's going to be hard to figure out who is focusing on the directive because there's so many enemies running around. So the mechanics are bringing a little bit of chaos to the team dynamics. You're going to feel that. And I think that's part of it. So that's kind of the chaos that comes with these invasions that sort of comes with any incursion or raid style mission. So I think it's good. 
because it's manageable and you want to feel a little bit of that chaos. Otherwise, it's just another mission. Whether it's for you or not is something else. But I think these have been around for a while and enough people have done them where most people get it. So the catch is who's leading the objective? Is that you or is it your teammate? So with this one, it was pretty easy because it was just kill everything, collect the brains. But one thing you might know is that it's a collective collection of those data drops, those green flags. So if one person just goes and stands next to the receiver, then those people collecting the data points will automatically be putting them into the receiver because there's somebody that's just standing there. So hopefully that tip makes things go really fast for you. And the boss fight, yeah, he was tanky. So I did this one twice back to back and it took me almost exactly the same amount of time, four and a half minutes. It wasn't super easy. It wasn't super hard. It felt just right. I think they did a good job, but let me know your thoughts when you get a chance to run through this. Okay. Now let's talk about the White Knight Gulch Mysteries End because this is a different story. When I played this solo, went smooth, there was no real problems, but I think we have a mechanic issue now that there's a team dynamic. So with this one, you got the poles, you got to shoot off the tumors to reveal the symbols, and then you go interact with the drone. The problem is that those drones are pretty spread out and so is the team and somebody's focusing on the objective, thank goodness, they go interact with that drone and you are really far away. There's an alarm, but you only have a few seconds to get to its dome, its protection area. And if you don't make it, you go down. So I played this mission twice, back to back with four players. And at every interaction point, we basically had a squad wipe. So the guy that interacted with the drone was the only one standing and he had to go around and pick everybody up. It feels a little broken. I think they're gonna have to rework this. It's a tiny bit frustrating, so I would brace yourself for that, but it's not a big deal. You're gonna get through it because at that time when the team wipes, except for the guy that interacted with the drone, there's no enemies. So basically waterfall your pickups. So that guy's got to pick up one guy and then, so he should just go run and shoot the tumors off the door. So that way you guys can manage the timer while everybody else is picking each other up. I mean, I guess that's what we're gonna have to do until they fix this. But the reason why I don't think you could just play around this is I don't think it's a skill thing because some of these areas are really wide. And what are you gonna do? Just run around in a tight little group together all the time. So if you go left to go scout the drones over there to see if the symbols, your other guy goes right to scout those drones to see the symbols and then he finds it and he interacts with it you're so far away you're going down you're not going to make it back to him in time i mean it's possible but that's going to happen a lot and in this one it was a perfect example of mysteries and especially that open scene because it's very widespread but even in the next room where we were kind of clustered together i was looking for who was interacting with the drone and there was so much chaos it was hard to tell who was doing what and by the time i realized who it was team wipe. So that got a little frustrating. So I think they're going to have to fix that. And I think they should do it as soon as possible because what is that? One third of the missions here. And so there's a couple of things that they could probably do is they can increase the area of protection. They could just make it so that the team doesn't wipe. I think that's just, let's just do that. Or they can increase the timer or that it's not enough to kill you, but it's enough to maybe damage you or a combination of everything above. Otherwise that was it. I think it went really smooth and these are fast. You're in and out five to seven minutes. Now, for those of you who are thinking, I want more, I need more content. I got these really strong descendants and I have nowhere to use them. Well, this could put a few of those descendants to the test, I think, but there's more coming. I covered that in the other video. So check that one out. A lot of that stuff will be hitting on October 10th. That's just a couple of weeks away. Do you think they're in a good spot with these invasions? What else would you like to see added to them? Thank you for hanging out with me. My name is Tuxedo Bandito. That's Tito Bandito. One and only. And this was another episode of The First Descendant. If you found this video helpful, subscribe, like, and turn on notifications to ensure you don't miss out on the fantastic experiences waiting for you in The First Descendant. And if you like videos like this, check out the one I have recommended for you right here. If you have anything you want to see covered, be sure to let me know in the comments below. And thank you to all the channel members and donors who make everything possible. Tux Nation wouldn't be without you. When you buy or download anything for the first Descendant, be sure to use Tux's creator code to support the channel. Easy peasy. Follow me.